In this uh, tutorial, we will consider mass and enthalpy balances for a three-effect evaporator. As we see here in this uh, schematic, we have identified various quantities related to the feed stream, the uh, streams for uh, uh, vapors, uh, for the concentrated product, uh, for uh, steam, as well as for condensate. So let's first uh, write the mass balance. So for the feed, the mass flow rate is m dot f entering the bottom of the first effect. So m dot f equals the mass flow rate of vapors leaving the first effect, m dot v1. Note that those vapors are used as heating medium for the second effect and therefore they are leaving the system later as a condensate. So in our mass balance we must account for the mass of those vapors. So we have m dot v1. Similarly we have m dot v2 vapors coming from the second effect and m dot v3 vapors coming from the third effect plus, of course, the mass flow rate of the concentrated product stream. The solid balance can be written as xf times m dot f, where xf is the solid fraction, which will be dimensionless. So xf m dot f tells us the amount of solid present in the feed stream, and that equals xp, the solid fraction in the concentrated product stream times m dot p. Now for the enthalpy balance, we have to account for enthalpy of each of the streams. So the enthalpy entering with the feed is hf. So we have m dot f times hf plus m dot s times hvs where HVS represents the enthalpy of the saturated steam that we obtain from steam tables. That equals m dot v1, that's the mass flow rate of the vapors coming out from the first effect, times HV1. HV1 is the enthalpy of the vapors from first effect, plus m dot f1, which is the amount of partially concentrated feed coming out of effect 1 times HF1 where HF1 is the enthalpy of that pre-concentrated stream plus M dot S times HCS where M dot S represents now the mass flow rate of condensate leaving the first effect times the enthalpy of that condensate. The second equation is for the second effect of the evaporator for which we have now our feed as m dot f1 times hf1 which represents now the enthalpy of the feed stream into second effect plus m dot v1 times hv1. Note that the vapors leaving from first effect are now the heating medium for the second effect that equals the mass flow rate of vapors leaving the second effect m dot v2 times the enthalpy of those vapors hv2 plus m dot f2 that is the enthalpy with the mass flow rate of this product stream leaving the second effect times the enthalpy of that stream hf2 plus m dot v1 times HC1, the enthalpy of that condensate, so M dot V1 times HC1. So our third equation is for the third effect. M dot F2, which is the mass flow rate of the feed that came from the second effect and now entering the third effect, times its enthalpy HF2, plus m dot v2 times hv2 representing the enthalpy of the 
vapors that came from the second effect and now being used as heating medium in the third effect that equals m dot v3 times hv3 which represents the enthalpy leaving with the vapors from the third effect plus m dot p times hp3 representing the enthalpy leaving with the final concentrated product stream plus m dot v2 times hc2 representing the enthalpy leaving with the condensate from the third effect. So these three equations for the enthalpy balances for first, second and third effect plus the solid balance and the mass balance give us five equations. So those five equations are solved simultaneously to obtain the unknowns in a given problem. For heat transfer areas, we can use the following equations for the three effects. Q1, the rate of heat transfer in the first effect, will equal U1 A1 times Ts minus T1 equal M dot S HVS minus M dot S HCS. So the left hand side gives us the rate of heat transfer across the tubes, the heating tubes in the first effect by using the overall heat transfer coefficient, the area and the temperature difference that is between the temperature of the steam and the boiling point inside the first effect T1 and on the right hand side we have the enthalpy associated with the steam minus the enthalpy that leaves with the condensate. So that's the amount of heat that gets transferred from steam into the liquid stream. Second equation for the second effect is Q2 equals U2 A2 T1 minus T2 equals M dot V1 HV1 minus M dot V1 HC1. Again, this is similar to our discussion for the first equation. Uh, the only difference here, of course, we have used T1 minus T2 because T1 is the temperature of the vapors coming in as heating medium and T2 is the boiling point temperature maintained inside the second effect. The third equation for the third effect is Q3 equals U3 A3 times T2 minus T3 equals M dot V2 HV2 minus M dot V2 HC2. And again here uh, T2 minus T3 represent the temperature difference between the heating medium which is the vapors coming from the second effect at temperature T2 minus T3 where T3 is the temperature maintained inside the third effect. We can obtain the steam economy as M dot V1 plus M dot V2 plus M dot V3 where these are the mass flow rates of the vapor streams exiting from each of the effects. So that total amount of vapors that are produced in the triple effect evaporator divided by the mass flow rate of steam M dot S. Typically, the steam economy of a triple effect evaporator is between 2 and 3. Now note that the units for these various quantities that we have used, uh, we can summarize them here. M dot S, M dot V1, M dot V2, M dot V3 are in kilograms per second and so are the M units for M dot F, M dot F1, M dot F2, M dot P. They are all kilograms per second as they are mass flow rates. XF and XP, the solid fractions are dimensionless. And then the enthalpy terms, HVS, HV1, HV2, HV3, HF, HF1, HF2, HP3, HCS, HC1, and HC2 are all in kilojoules per kilogram. 